I recently discovered this mesmerizing rheoscopic fluid and thought it would make a really interesting and unique holiday ornament if I threw it inside a clear plastic bowl and included a small motor to agitate the mixture. Now at first it may seem like a really stupid idea to submerge an electronic device inside a fluid and I'll touch on that a bit later as to why we can kind of get away with it in this situation. But first let's actually see how we can create this really cool fluid. Here are the three main ingredients that you're going to need. Some regular tap water. If you do have it, then distilled water is gonna be the better option. Then some rheoscopic concentrate. I'm going with a type called Pearl Swirl and I'll leave a link to it in the description down below as well as all the other parts that you're going to need. They are affiliate links, so using them would definitely help out the channel. Then finally, some food coloring. I'm personally going with blue because I think it gives the best results, but you can try other colors as well. And from there, it's just a simple case of mixing it all together. There is an optimal ratio to use, but uh, I'm just gonna kind of squirt some of this in and then add a few drops of food coloring and correct as I need to. This captivating mixture is known as a rheoscopic fluid. The concentrate that I added earlier contains many, many light reflecting particles. And when stirred around, these light reflecting particles enable us to see the turbulent flows and currents of the fluid. If I stop stirring the mixture, those light reflecting particles will drop to the bottom of the container. This isn't a problem as when I come back and agitate it again, the mixture will go right back into its turbulent state, picking up those particles and dispersing them throughout the fluid. I experimented with a variety of ways of agitating the mixture. Some of the more successful ones were dropping items inside the mixture, using magnets to agitate it, or even blowing air through it. Unfortunately, all of these methods require some user input to actually agitate the fluid, which isn't really ideal if we want to create an ornament. So here comes a stupid idea. Let's throw an electrical motor inside the mixture. Surprisingly, there's not an immediate failure. In fact, it's been about 10 days since I made this project to when I'm now doing this voiceover. And in that time, the ornaments have been operating fine for about eight hours a day. So why is this? Despite using tap water that contains ions and various minerals, there's not actually enough particles in there to create a short circuit immediately. This is where using distilled water will give even better performance than regular tap water. So while we didn't experience an immediate failure, there will still be corrosion occurring on the motor brushes due to electrolysis, and this will definitely lead to a premature failure. However, given the performance so far, I'm fairly confident that we should be able to stretch it until the holidays. Okay, this has all been very interesting, but how do I actually make the Christmas ornaments? I'm going to feed the wires from the motor through these small holes at the top of the ornament and then hot glue the base of the motor into the silver frame. Now it's important to cover as much of the base of the motor with hot glue as possible because this is the most likely ingress point for water. At the other end of the motor, there's a metal bushing that's fairly tightly meshed with the axle. And so hopefully there'll be very minimal water penetration through that way. In order to fit inside the neck of the ornament, I'm going to bend these rotor blades and a little bit of asymmetry in the bending is good because that's just going to introduce even more turbulence into the system. And then once that's on, it's a simply a case of adding a bit more hot glue around the neck and squishing it into position, ensuring that there's a tight seal to avoid any fluid leaks in the future. Thank you. 
And then the final step is beautification. I'm going to wire each of the ornaments together in parallel and wrap Christmas tinsel around the wires just to disguise the entire thing. You could throw on some Christmas lights if you want as well. I'm also going to put in there a couple of fuses just so that when the motors do eventually fail, the fuses will blow instead of the wires melting away. And I'm just going to hook it up to three volts and let's see how this goes. So it does work, but it's a little violent and kind of too chaotic to actually see and appreciate the effect. So for the best results, I kind of want to reduce the violence and the speed of the turbulent flow. In order to slow down the speed of the motors, I'm going to use the Arduino Nano and the L293 motor driver hooked up as shown here in this wiring diagram. Now I'm just going to go ahead and upload a short sketch to the Arduino and this is just going to control the speed and direction of the motors. Playing around with different timing and speeds we can get a very calming mixture or a very violent and aggressive stirring and agitation. Here I have them hanging outside my studio space. Uh, if you're interested, I might do a studio tour in the future. So let me know in the comments down below if that's something you're interested in or not. Now that these ornaments have been operational for a few days, I have a few reflections and improvements that I wanted to share with you. At the beginning of the video, some of you may have noticed that the water that I used had a lot of bubbles in it. In hindsight, it would have been a very smart idea to actually boil the water to remove that dissolved oxygen. Because as you can see in the final ornament, after several days of use, that dissolved air has actually come out and has formed air bubbles. One other issue that I've noticed is that when I turn them off overnight, obviously all the particles tend to settle at the bottom of the ornament. And then when I come back and turn them on the next day, uh, not all those particles are actually picked up out of solution. There's still a very thin layer of stubborn particles that just adhere to the wall. And that's actually causing, you know, a depreciation in the quality of the effect because the light that's shining onto the ornament is getting bounced off that thin reflective layer as opposed to getting reflected off those internal turbulent flows. If you decide to make this project for yourself, I'd really enjoy to see the final result, so feel free to tag me on Instagram.